So today we'll be talking about online libraries and online resources, especially what they are and how you can use them. So online libraries and online resources offer you a broad selection of online resources, including, including audiobooks, ebooks, research platforms, movies, magazines, and articles. Um, many public libraries offer this kind of online content. And additionally, there are some individual private websites that do, that do also offer this kind of online resources. So first of all, public online libraries. So almost every public library offers some digi digital content on their website. And in order to access this content, you are likely required to have a library card. And we will show you how to um, how to register for a library card and how to get access to this kind of um, to those online resources. So in general, the steps to access online content is first of all, you want to find your local library, depending on what city or what town you live in. Then you will register for a library card. Then you can log into their online um, platform and then you should be able to um, have access to ebooks, audiobooks, uh, video contents and all kind of different resources. So here's just a list of major public libraries in Canada and their websites. So once this presentation will be sent to you, you can just access those libraries through the link. Um, However, almost every town and every city has their own public library. So if your city was not listed um, before, you just open Google or your preferred internet browser and you type in the search bar public library followed by the name of your town or your city and then hit enter and it should come up as one of the first results. As soon as you uh, have opened the website of your local library, you want to register for a library card if you not already have one. Uh, if you already have a library card, you can skip this step and just log in. If you need a library card, you will look for a link on the website that kind of says get a library card or something similar. Just note that the format and the, the look of the website will look a bit different depending on what your public library is. For example, this is the website of the Vancouver Public Library. And here we just click on get the library card. Also note that normally you would have to go to a library to get, um, to get a card. However, due to the situation with this pandemic and COVID-19, most public libraries give you the chance to um, register for library card online. So as soon as you found the get a library card link, or it may sound just similar, differently phrased, you click on it and then you follow the steps. So most likely you will be required to fill out some personal information and then click agree. So, agree. so for example, this is again the Vancouver Public Library. You just fill out all your personal information and your phone number, click it, it, um, I agree. Also, you will likely be required to show some proof of residence. So they just want to make sure that you actually live in the city in which you apply for, for a library card. And when you're applying online, likely they will just ask for your phone number so they can use the area code. Once this pandemic is over and the public library branches are open again, you can also just visit your local library branch and get a library card there. Uh, just make sure that you, that you bring with you proof of residence. So this could be a bill, um, a bank statement or any, any document that has your address and your name on it. You should also bring a piece of identity, best a driver's license or a passport, something that has a photo and a, um, of you and your name on it. Also, just to note, your first library card is often free, so you do not have to pay for any of it. However, if you lose your library card and you require a new card, they will likely charge you a really small amount. I think for the Toronto Public Library, it's about $2 that you'd have to pay to get the second library card. Um, okay, so as soon as you registered and you have a library card, you should be able to um, enjoy um, digital content. So this includes 
audiobooks. You, you will be able to listen to audiobooks. You can read ebooks. Often you can also read magazines and newspapers. Some library, like public libraries also offer you to, to watch movies or to listen to music. And you can even take it further. So many public libraries offer you programs that you can participate in. Just check the website of your local library uh, for more information and dates. Just be aware that all in-person programs are likely canceled due to COVID-19. However, there are a lot of online programs that you can do. And you will also be able to find many resources, articles, and podcasts on the websites of your um, public local library. And I know we've we briefly touched upon like um, Canadian public libraries. However, for public libraries in the US, it, it works pretty similar. So you just follow the same steps. So first you'll find your local library. You will then register for a library card you log in and then you should be able to enjoy their digital content. So here again, it's just a list of like major big public libraries in the United States and their um, websites. However, if your city or town is not listed here, um, do not worry, uh, just go to Google, uh, again, search for public, li public library and the name of your city or town, hit enter and it should appear. I will now do a short live demo, um, just generally um, showing you how to navigate a public library site. So I will use the Toronto Public Library site. This, can you see my screen? Can you see that I open Google? Yes, we can. Okay, perfect. So first of all, you go to Google. Then, um, because I want to access the Toronto Public Library, I'll Google Toronto Public Library. Here it is. I hit enter and it's right here, the first thing that pops up. So I'll click on it. Okay, so now, now that I'm on here, if I do not have a library card and I do want to get a library card, there are two things I could do. I could click on sign in. And then here, don't have a library card, click on this link. And then it will tell you the steps that you have to do to get a library card with the Toronto Public Library. Otherwise, you can also go to using the library and click how to get a library card. I already have an account, so I will show you how to log in. So you click on sign in. You will have to type in your library card number and then your password or PIN and then you just click sign in as soon as you sign in it will say sign out up here and then you can basically access all their digital content so for example i could browse different books and um, depending on like the the genre of it um, i can also um, especially look for ebooks and e-audiobooks so this is all the content they have online I can click on the programs to find out what programs, online programs and classes they offer. Um, yeah, so I can just show you, for example, if I want to read an ebook, I click on ebooks. And then I have some suggestions here. However, you can also just search for a specific book. So let's say you have a specific uh, book that you, you'd like to read or you Let's say you want to read Shakespeare. You put it up here in the search bar, click hit search, and then it will show you all, all the books they have. So some of them won't be online, then it says place hold. Some of them you can access online. So you can just click on it, access online, and you should be able to read it. Yeah, so again, there's so many, so many different resources. You just um, go to your the website of your local library and find out what they have. Um, I will now go back to the presentation. Okay. So before we've talked about public libraries. Um, however, there are also some other providers that offer free online content. And many of these are nonprofit organizations um, who have the goal to make books available to everyone. So for these, you do not need a library card and you can access these websites from any electronic device. So basically, it's not dependent on where you live. Um, however, just to note, 
please verify that the website you are using is approved and does not offer illegal downloads. We will now go over a list of some useful websites um, to access online content. So Weeprint. Weeprint is a website that offers you over 80,000 free books and it was recognized by Times Magazine as one of the 50 best websites in 2010. Then Public Bookshelf, um, it offers you also, it also gives you access to a great variety of books for all interests. Then Project Gutenberg, um, it's a volunteer project with the goal to make as many books as possible available to the public. And right now it contains over 59,000 free ebooks. Then Open, Open Library, it's a nonprofit organization with the intent to create one web page for every book ever published. So it offers you access to many public domain and out of print books. Then the online book page. Um, offer gives you access to over 2 million free books for your personal use. The Literature Network offers a variety of books, poems, quotes, and it also has literature forums with thousands of members where there's room for discussions and questions. Additionally, the site offers knowledge quizzes, so if you're looking to test your knowledge in literature. Then Classic Bookshelf offers you a variety of different classics. So th this website focuses more on classical literature. Then Chest of Books offers a, a variety of content for all kinds of interests, including photography books, cooking books, and crafting books. And then the Internet RP Archive, it's the most extensive free online library with millions of free books, as well as movies, music, and softwares. And it's one of the top 300 websites in the world. So it gives it offers you um, access to content for every interest, including movies. And then lastly, public public literature. It's a website used by many well-known authors to share and discuss the latest words. It is also a platform where aspiring authors can share their writing with a broad audience. So those are just some examples. Um, there are many more out there. So uh, you can also just always Google um, free online resources and you will find a variety of different websites. Um, yeah, now I think Lyndon will take over for the second part. Okay, so, um, so now we're gonna talk about um, some other resources. Um, so YouTube is one place you can get um, audiobooks. Um, obviously, there is um, no video because it's audiobook. Um, but so you will need internet connection to um, get these audiobooks unless you have um, YouTube Premium, which is paid. Um, there is also an app called Audible. Um, and so you can get two free audiobooks and 30 days of Prime, which is their paid plan for free. But if you want more than that, you will have to pay. Um, and Audible is also only audiobooks. So that's important to keep in mind. Um, and then also um, Spotify. We recently did a, a webinar on Spotify. So you can, I'm sure, find that on our YouTube. Um, but it has some audiobooks in Spotify. Um, there are no ebooks, obviously, because Spotify is just for listening. Um, so you can find the audiobooks in Spotify um, under Word in, um, when you're browsing in your Spotify. Um, those of you who don't have Spotify won't know what I'm talking about, but maybe some of you do and that's helpful. Um, okay, so this is how you get to the um, audiobooks on YouTube. So just go to youtube.com, um, this link here, or um, go into the app if you have the app and search for audiobooks um, and you know you could put in like whatever specific audiobook you want to listen to um, and then yeah it's pretty straightforward there so what I'm going to be focus on, focusing on um, for my part of this presentation is um, this app called or this company called um, Overdrive 
Um, so Overdrive is a company that gives you access to audiobooks and ebooks without having to pay. Um, so the only thing you need to get access to Overdrive is a library card. And um, you can use any library card from any library worldwide, um, so wherever you live. Um, and so you can access Overdrive through your browser. Um, and this link here is just for signing up for Overdrive. Um, so you could always just type in in Google Overdrive sign up and you should get the same link. Um, and so the first, yeah. So here, so what you'll see is um, a thing that says sign up using library card. And then if you click that, um, then you'll be prompted to find your library. Um, and so basically, you will be asked to enter your library name. Um, I tried to do this with location and it didn't work. So um, there's a little, so there's a little thing where you can select either name or location. And I found the name is better. Um, and then basically you just put in your city or region. So it doesn't matter if you, like if you live in a big city like Toronto, there's lots of different branches um, of libraries, but you don't have to put in the specific branch. You can just put in the city. So it's pretty easy. Um, and then just, you know, click on any of the, because they will show you the different branches like I have here, if you live in a big city. So just click on any of them and it will um, bring you to the same window, um, which is this window here. And you'll be prompted to either um, put in your card number and PIN if you have a library card, or um, if you don't have a card, you can um, click the start here button um, or bottom it says sign in with your mobile number. Um, so that's a great thing that a lot of libraries are doing. Um, as Sophie said, a lot of libraries are providing um, special plans for COVID um, and for Toronto Public Library, you only need your mobile number. Um, so. You can also access Overdrive through the app called Libby. Um, and so this is if you want to access your material through your phone or tablet. Um, so you don't have to go through all the previous steps that I mentioned with the web browser. Um, so you can find the app Libby in either the App Store or the Google Play Store. And this is what it looks like. Um, and so once you have downloaded Libby, um, just click, um, click on the app and follow the prompts, like open the app and follow the prompts. Um, so there are quite a bit of prompts to sign in and even I was like really confused about it. Um, but fear not, um, you'll, you'll figure it out. Um, so basically the first prompt you're going to get is the question, do you have a library card? So if you click yes, then you will have to put in your library card number. Um, if you click no, um, that applies to either if you have like a special library card where you just access it through your phone number, um, then click not yet or you don't. If you haven't used that before, you can also click not yet. Um, and then it'll give you three options once, once you click um, not yet. And um, so one of them is if you have Libby on another device, you can copy your cards across. Um, and another one is um, you can look up your library by name or location. And then the last one is guessing your library. So you'll probably just put in your you know, postal code or something. Um, so I'm gonna go with, I'm gonna show you what happens when you click um, enter your library by name or location. Um, so basically, um, so again, you just put in your city or region, so there's no need to put in specific areas or specific branches. So since I live in Toronto, I just put Toronto in the search bar. And, and then only one thing should come up. 
and it's going to be going to say Toronto Public Library or whatever your public library is. Um, so make sure to click on that tab and then um, you will be asked to either enter your library card number or your phone number if you don't have a library card, um, which is an option for a lot of um, a lot of libraries or just information to verify that you live in the city that this library is part of or the uh, region. Um, also, one thing to um, make sure is oftentimes um, they will send you a verification code if you're using your um, phone number. So just make sure to have your phone nearby and make sure um, it has enough bars because usually they text, they um, send you a uh, text message and not an iMessage. Um, that's something that often I forget and I don't get the verification code. Um, so that's important to consider. Um, yeah, and then you're in, you should be in if all the steps um, went right. Um, and so, um, yeah, just have fun exploring um, the app Libby and um, yeah, there are a lot of audiobooks and ebooks in your library and um, there are a lot of different categories too for these. There are also magazines as well. Um, so um, I'm going to show you a quick demo here. Um, there's a pig on the bottom because I was um, reading um, Animal Farm, if you're wondering. <laughs> um, okay, so here's the app. And um, so I'm gonna show you how to, um, so there's a little place at the top called Preferences. Um, so here you can choose the format, which is really useful. So if you wanna read um, a book, then you can click Books and then make sure to click apply preferences. And then all of the things you will hear will be books. Um, and then if you want to look at audiobooks, you can also do that. And one thing to consider is if you don't have these preferences, another way to tell if they're audiobooks is they have a little, um, little icon at the bottom that says audio with a little pair of AirPods. Um, so, that's how you tell. Um, and you can also sort by um, popularity. Um, so what books are the most popular right now? Um, you can sort by release date, so the newest books. Um, and yeah, so that's a bit of um, preferences there. And oh yeah, also availability. So sometimes you have to wait for books because there are too many people who are borrowing them. So if you click available now, then all of these books will, you will be able to borrow right now, which is useful. Um, and then there are, um, let's see what else I can show you. Um, so here's another way to this says I wait. That's another way to see um, the titles that are available with um, a limited um, time or no waiting at all. Um, and then here are a lot of different categories. So you can even explore more subjects. Like look at how many there are tons of subjects. Um, so it's a great way to get really specific um, books. And um, they also show you um, titles chosen by librarians, so ones that are recommended. Um, there's four uh, services, Lone Stars, um, just added, so new, new books. There's um, Toronto in fiction because this is Toronto Public Library. So for your library, it might be whatever city or region you're in. Um, and then, so the Globe 100 Best Book 2019. Um, there's also a section for Lives Matter, I think. Um, I'm not seeing it right now, but. Um, 
So they have a lot of different categories. Um, you can also search if you want a specific thing. So I was searching before for a tree grows in Brooklyn, which is, oh, and I have my preferences on. So that's why I can't see anything. So um, I'm just gonna click any for all of these and then I should get um, default. So I should get, there we go. So I can get them now. Um, and so here, if I wanna read the, so this, since it doesn't have the icon at the bottom with the AirPods, it means it's a book. Um, so it's not an audiobook. Um, and this one, I'm sure to look right here um, where it says wait time about 15 weeks. Um, so that means that obviously it would take me a long time to, before I could read the book, but you can always read a sample. Um, and the sample I believe is one chapter or maybe two chapters, so you can read a sample. And you just, you just scroll um, to go to the next page. Um, you scroll um, left to go right and right to go left. It's, it's pretty standard. And then to get to the main menu, you just scroll down like that. And um, so for the books, some important things to consider. Um, this icon here, um, if you see it's changing, I can't zoom in here. Um, so I know it's a little bit um, small, but this icon, you can make it um, like one page, um, so a bit longer, or, oh, sorry. Um, there we go. Or you can make it two pages. Um, so there's that icon there. And there's also, um, a text scale, so you can change the, um, the font size. Um, I believe if you go further to the right, then it gets bigger. Um, and yeah, let's see. Then you can also do um, accessibility sizes. Um, and yeah, there we go. So yeah, so if you scroll to the right it gets bigger as you can see um and then you can also do lighting um so you can do like dark mode or you can do sepia which is kind of cool because it makes it look like an actual book um and yeah so there's like tons of things you can do with um, this app reading um and yeah so then to get back to your um so i was in like the search mode just click back and um so it's 340 i should probably wrap up soon um but if so your library and shelves so your library is where you can find um you know new books that you want to read read samples of books and then your shelf shows you um so what your loans are or what you're reading now, um, which it just shows you, like even if you read a sample of it, it'll show up there. So you can find out, um, you can find books that you've read samples of in this area. And so this is a book that, um, this is an audiobook that I have on loan. So I can click open audiobook. And then um, for the, um, audiobooks there are um, there's a playback speed thing which is good because sometimes the people reading them can go a little bit fast um, so basically if you go like 150 to 175 is usually where I go and that'll be um, slower um, so that's something to consider um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much all I want to talk about. 